So as all of you know, I'm not a huge fan of Hassan Piker. I basically see the dude as a giant fraud who will preach one thing constantly on his streams, being socialism, and then lives the most capitalist lifestyle he possibly could. And in his mind, there's no disconnect between these two things whatsoever. But obviously there is a contradiction between believing in wealth redistribution and then personally hoarding all of your wealth, living the most capitalist lifestyle you possibly can. And when he does spend his money, it's on an expensive house or, you know, a Porsche. Those things would be swag. Keep in mind, I think that stuff is cool, but he is him therefore it is cringe. That being said, this is not the only criticism of Hassan Piker I have. In fact, it's probably the weakest criticism I could possibly have. The bigger criticism a lot of people have been talking about is Hassan's coverage of breaking news and how he does a very poor job, like with the Ukraine war. What's up, folks? I'm live and alive, and we got a lot to talk about. I was right about Ukraine. That's right. War is not imminent. Oh, shocked. Shocked to find out. Anyway, we're going to talk about that and a bunch of other stuff, so get in now. Possibly a new React series as well, so you don't want to miss it. I think maybe I'll tell my editors to do this, but I think I'll just change like, I'll change this every day to Ukraine is still, has still not been invaded by Russia. He was making all of these videos, TikToks, Snapchat videos, streams, saying the war could never happen, it could never ever happen. And then when Russia did invade Ukraine, he sort of half-heartedly walked it back. He did apologize in a tweet from the time, which some would argue shows some goodwill. But in my opinion, that apology is only valid if his behavior changes, if he stops covering breaking news in that way, where he has an extremely strong prediction, an extremely strong viewpoint, and then gets called out and has to walk it back entirely. But unfortunately, his behavior did not change. Instead, he continued to cover breaking news in an irresponsible manner, where he would make a definitive statement saying one thing was true, and that would be something he could not possibly prove, like with the airstrike on a hospital in Palestine, which Hassan asserts was 1,000% a malicious attack from the Israelis. And while it could be, we didn't know if it was. And he was making definitive statements saying it was definitely a war crime on part of Israel. He was doing like impromptu missile analysis, being like, I can definitely tell this is a JDAM because of this and this. And it's like, dude, you don't know what you're talking about. And when people would call him out for this in his chat or even, you know, innocently question him, he would freak out at them and call them pigs because that's all he really has to say. Baying pig, you f bloodthirsty, violent pig dog. I mean, he's really just losing it lately. And I really think incidents like this are slowly hitting away at Hassan's audience, where the viewers who do notice this crazy, irresponsible behavior are gonna slowly be looking for other streamers like Destiny who are calling Hassan out. And he's someone who, from what I've seen, does at least try to do a better job at covering breaking news. Well, with all of this mounting criticism, someone was gonna put together the pieces eventually into a video. And it finally came in the form of Willie Mac show releasing Hassan, the worst politics streamer, wrong about everything. This is an hour-long video detailing the coverage Hassan has had on breaking news stories, and the basic criticism from Willie Mac, from a big picture perspective, is that Hassan will cover a breaking news story without knowing anything about it or doing any research. He's not a particularly informed or uniquely poised person to cover these issues. He'll distrust news outlets if they don't support the narrative he wants to hear, and that leads to a lot of blunders on his stream where he ends up looking really dumb. You f piece of sh you garbage, monstrous scumbag. You garbage, monstrous scumbag. You said IDF didn't bomb the hospital, and then you said it did, but Hamas was firing rockets from it in the same two minute time frame. So why did you buy at first? Huh? Willie begins his video by talking about socialism and React content, which are two big blind spots for Hassan that he's gotten a lot of flack for from people like Destiny and myself. But he then gets further into the weeds with his coverage of breaking news stories and how Hassan feels about certain events happening where he's then proven wrong. And every single time, Piker still doubles down. Kind of like Nick is not green, honestly. These dudes' egos just tend to get in the way of their coverage to a massive degree and it's kind of embarrassing to watch. You know, if you're covering stories like this, it's okay to have a bias because everybody does, but that bias becomes a massive issue when you you let it completely affect your coverage of the facts and are unwilling to acknowledge the truth. And that's exactly what's happening with Hassan right now, and it's kind of leading to a little bit of a downfall. Not to say he's completely irrelevant or he's like, you know, on the verge of collapse, right? I mean, he's still getting decent stream viewers, especially compared to everyone else, but his viewership has fallen off quite a bit, and it seems like he's kind of reached a saturation point where now he's only bleeding viewers rather than gaining them. The trans people in sports debate is a contentious one in the world of athletics, and it's something that all the culture war guys like Tim Pool or The Quartering talk about a lot. Some people believe that trans women should not compete in a league with cis women because of the competitive advantage that can come with the gender they were assigned at birth. For example, a six foot three man who transitions into a woman should not be able to compete in a league with cis women where the average height is around five foot five. Those extra 10 inches of height are a game changer in athletics and for women who have been competing with cis women their entire lives, to have someone who is a man just a few years ago come in and demolish the entire competition is extremely frustrating and unfair. And I would agree trans people should not compete with cis people in athletics. I think they should have rights 
right, to be clear. I'm not I'm not Mr. Gender Anger, guys. I don't I don't really care what trans people do with their lives. I seriously don't. But they should not be competing with cis athletes. The advantage is too great. And to deny that is to deny science. But Hassan thinks that opinion is transphobic, and he's communicated that very, very ardently on a stream. Please stop. You're not making any good arguments. No, the only reason why I'm not making any good arguments to you is because you are transphobic. And that's the unfortunate reality. And in and it's probably not going to change. This guy didn't even say anything hateful. He just didn't agree with his son. So now he's transphobic. Or they're literally breaking records after records, not just participating. Wrong, wrong. You are wrong. You are making that up. You have read like three articles from like three random edge cases you are wrong show me it's right there in front of you just read when one of hassan's trans fans would chime in and say that hassan's doing a bad job arguing for trans people hassan can no longer just write them off as being transphobic so instead hassan decides to be transphobic here's the other part like you for the record my issue as a trans person is the fact that you a guy that isn't super well versed on trans shit, brought on a known transphobe knowing he might bring up transphobic shit. you aren't exactly a vosh of trans debates i hope i hope that the rest of your life is as horrible as it is every single day, okay? There you go. Suck my dick. I despise you. I despise you more than anything else on the planet. You are fucking cancer, okay? You are cancer in this community and you're cancer in every community. Suck my dick. For the past 15 months, you've been able to fucking hide in these ranks. You cat boy fuck. Move your cat boy ass out of here. You are never welcome. You are never going to be unbanned, no matter how difficult it is, no matter how much you want to get unbanned, I will never unban you. This is insane to act like this because someone disagreed with you in your chat and not just ban them, but also go on a diatribe about how that person should be miserable forever with no irony at all is insane. This does not seem like a happy person. This makes me think Hassan is just miserable and spiteful. And this brings us all to Kyle Rittenhouse, the 17 year old who killed two rioters in Kenosha, Wisconsin. When it was legally proven that he acted in self-defense, and he did by the way, Hassan just went crazy basically calling him a murderer. And if you know the facts of that case, you know there were two people threatening a 17 year old kid who was holding an assault rifle and they were attempting to actively harm him. He acted in self-defense. And I'm not one of these gun guys who are like, don't tread on me. I didn't really grow up around guns. I'm not a big gun enthusiast. But to me, from seeing the facts presented in this case, Kyle should not have been charged with murder. He acted in self-defense. And I mean, it went to court. He was acquitted. Despite that, Hassan just ignored all the facts, called him a murderer and had a meltdown on stream like he always does. Imagine risking your life for someone else's property. I mean, he wasn't even like technically risking his life. Uh, he was trying to get a legal kill. Like, that's what he was trying to do, and he got it. This is what happens when you get a fucking legal kill. Bro, three people attempted to kill him. You've seen the videos. Kyle tried running away, but Assad ignores all of that and just says it's the conservative fantasy, murdering people. The greatest thing that could have happened uh, to internet conservatives is this, because this is their fantasy. This is like the psychopathic, bloodthirsty fantasies that they've all had. Okay. My understanding of it is that the property owners who have properties there choose just not to rent it at all. Yeah, kill them. Kill those motherfuckers in a video game. Sorry. <laughs> Holy shit. Murder those motherfuckers in the street. Let the streets, let the streets soak in their fucking red capitalist bloods, dude. Honestly, there's a study where uh, it says that, you know, more cops actually die from suicide. I don't know. Then, then gunfire and on the line of duty deaths. What are you getting at? I just, nothing. I, I'm just saying, you know, uh, let's get those numbers up, baby. Hey, remember, it's everyone else who's bloodthirsty. Definitely not his son who laughs when cops get killed. Oh, 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 watch out, watch out. Watch out. Are you okay? No, you shot me. Oh, God. <laughs> are you okay? <laughs> Is Hassan even truly mentally well? This isn't something you can excuse as like edgy teenage behavior. He's not making jokes. He just seems like a bloodthirsty dude who likes watching people die on video and laughs about it on stream. Like if anybody else had done this on Twitch, they would be instantly banned. But because he's Hassan Piker, because he has the political viewpoint that's in the zeitgeist, he has good connections with Twitch, he's allowed to keep operating there. Not saying he should be banned by the way, but like considering that he's willing to do this kind of content on stream, but Destiny can't be on Twitch, it's kind of a big inconsistency on their part. And even beyond the obvious contradiction 
contradiction from the platform around censorship. How can someone defend violence like this when it's unjustified? And then when it's legally self-defense, say that it's like beyond the pale, terrible, disgusting, evil, conservatives are just bloodthirsty nut jobs. I mean, the fact that this dude has an audience as big as he does is unreal to me. But at the same time, this is how his fans feel as well. This is the kind of thing his viewers want to cheer on. And so, of course, he's going to have that big of an audience. You know, these are the kinds of people you see on Twitter every single day. It's kind of blackpilling to realize that a large portion of the population thinks that indiscriminately killing police officers is a good thing. I don't think these people are mentally well or live in the real world as functioning members of society. I would I would venture to, to say they have like no real life experience and they're just making these claims because they're so detached from these situations that when they hear a Twitch streamer espouse an opinion that cops are bad, therefore we shouldn't feel bad when anything bad happens to them. Despite the fact they are, you know, people too, just like you and I, they are people with thoughts and families and they're not all terrible people either. But obviously like this is the kind of opinion that Hassan's audience likes. This is what he espouses on a stream. This is the kind of audience he's built. And the amazing breaking news covers does not end there. When there was an attack on a US base, Hassan immediately said it was an inside job by the CIA. Wait, what? Attack on US consulate in Iran yes, happening mom. now? False flag. 100%. MEK false flag. MEK uh, actors. 0% chance that that is so fucking sussy. Oh no. Oh, that's what is that's what's going on in Iraq, the American base that was under attack. No fucking shot. When I say MEK, I just mean CIA. It, I said MEK, but I mean CIA. Rumors saying the missiles were launched from Iran. I mean, dog. Come on, bro. Like, come the fuck on. You think, like, think about this. The Iranian government, after like years of fucking crippling sanctions, despite fucking Four following things. the denuclearization agreements under Donald Trump, still got more sanctions and still got fucked over time and time again. Who are still trying to, according to the U.S. State Department, uh, very close to finalizing the denuclearization deal this week, ends up bombing an American base? Like, really, dude? Now, to be clear, the CIA has done some disgusting sh there's no denying that. MK Ultra, for example. Pretty cringe, guys. Pretty not cool. Cringe, but I feel like there should be some standard of evidence when you're trying to be a serious political news commentator. He's not even just memeing, right? He's not even like a history guy. He's trying to be a genuine political news commentator who covers breaking stories. And when you're covering these stories, if you want to sincerely make an accusation of government conspiracy, well, some sort of evidence is needed. Hassan had none. But as Willie points out, Hassan then calls his viewers who question this narrative insane warmongers who are also so racist. Yes, dude, I'm wrong, okay? It's probably Iran. You're right. It's probably Iran fucking blowing shit up for no reason. You're right. Let's believe that instead. You got it. It's it's Iran doing it 100%. Iran's the one doing it. They're irrational. God damn it, dude. I'm so annoyed. Like, one fucking dub for the American intelligence, and they never shut the fuck up. These goddamn stupid, pathetic, little sniveling cowards living in the Imperial core that regularly are like, I love war! I love war! I well, with the appetizers out of the way, Willie moves on to the main courses. Because everything we've covered so far has just been the appetizers, okay? We're gonna get to the entree. The Israel-Palestine conflict has been super contentious online. Dun, dun, dun! Some people like Israel, some people like Palestine. Personally, I have no stake. I'm not someone who really cares about this conflict because it's just so detached from me. I don't know any Israelis. I don't know any Palestinians. So my investment is at an all-time low. But for Hassan, he's constantly riled up about this. And this heat, this energy led him and Ethan Klein to basically end the leftover podcast, which they have been doing for years, because Ethan was not totally condemning every Israeli and saying that they deserve to die. Meanwhile, Hassan just thought that was too far, so he had to get in there real quick and remind Ethan what his position truly was. And then Hassan's crazy audience starts harassing Ethan too. And it seems now that the podcast is probably not coming back anytime soon. Everyone in my circle, all the leftist uh, people that I watch, that I'm part of, that watch this show, because I consider myself a part of that side, are all pretty much uncritically accepting of Hamas propaganda and un caring about the rewriting re of history right before our fucking eyes about this stuff. So I'm not seeing a lot of people, even though you might look at the popular media and say, you know, everybody's supporting Israel. The popular media's defense of Israel is cartoonishly dumb and evil. You know, burn, burn them all to the ground. They have a right to defend themselves. Bomb God, like psycho shit. okay. But on the left, I don't see anyone saying what I'm saying right now. I just see the opposite. And so that's why I feel that I need to say it. I don't, if you're going to extrapolate from this that I don't care about Palestinians dying, then you're definitely reading way too 
far into this. And you're also, in my opinion, really callous. Well, as it turns out, Hassan's coverage of breaking news around this conflict has been pretty questionable on his own streams. Instead of reading articles for sources, he reads tweets from random Twitter accounts to get his information, which is always a great way to get the most facts about anything, right? I mean, I mean, you guys all know, you know me. If I need to prove anything, I trust a random Twitter account because they are definitely going to be credible. Update from eight minutes ago. Between 200 and 300 people killed in Gaza Hospital airstrike according to Hamas-run health ministry from one hour ago. Wait, what? No, the number is like 800 now. His source for discrediting this outlet is a tweet he found. The number is now at 887, according to on-the-ground reports. My friend in Gaza tells me, I smell the death now. After Israel violently kills more than 877 Palestinians in the Al-Ahli Arab Hospital in the center of Gaza City. It's a Christian hospital. There's a church next to it, too. Both are destroyed. He actually has no idea if they're destroyed. And obviously, I'm not saying mainstream media sources are completely correct. I'm not trying to, like, show for them. They get things wrong all the time and have to issue retractions. And it's worth pointing out when they do, and their credibility should be called into question as well. I'm not a huge fan of CNN or MSNBC or Fox News or whoever reports things like this because they do get things wrong. They do. However, to immediately distrust them and immediately trust a Twitter account with a thousand followers over them with no credibility, no background in journalism, no evidence, who is claiming themselves to be getting this information second or third hand, supposedly supposedly is ridiculous. When you cover breaking news, it's okay to report the facts that you can confirm. And for the rest, you should just say, I just don't know what happened here because it's unconfirmed. If you don't know, then that's the right thing to do, actually. The right thing is not to just claim you know the truth because of some intrinsic third eye inside your mind, which we all don't have access to. I'd love to know where Hassan's sources are, you know, to see have on the ground people covering it. With the money he has, he could definitely afford to send a journalist out there with some money, with some security. He could afford to send someone out there to get information about conflicts on the ground. But for some reason, he hasn't done that and instead he'd rather just like read twitter i guess gazan factions have a rocket powerful enough to be able to wipe out their own hospital they do not they do have rockets and sometimes there are failed launches but a failed launch on a fucking rocket is not going to be able to destroy an entire hospital they do not have the firepower capabilities of destroying an entire fucking hospital. And then he becomes a ballistics expert with a focus on missiles and how they sound, being able to instantly determine who fired it with nothing but a low res cell phone video. My bad, I guess I forgot that Hassan Piker served three tours in Iraq and has ordnance training and has a lot of experience in this field. Dude knows everything. He's a missile expert and we should be taking his coverage as fact. I honestly shouldn't even be talking about this. I'm speaking out of turn because he's the expert. Okay, I'm gonna put this side by side. I want you to fucking understand something, okay? So that is a JDAM called on. Do you think that, do you think that that seems similar to one another? Also not a ballistic trajectory expert, but that JDAM came from super high up. But if you look at the actual confirmed video of the bombing, you know that neither of these parties have the capability of dropping a bomb like this on themselves, even by accident or deliberately. They do not have this capability. You have no evidence, stop concluding. What is this? What am I looking at? What am I looking at with my own two eyes? What are you looking at? I have no evidence, don't believe your fuck What do you mean? If I ever speak this confidently about something I know literally nothing about, please dump a bucket of cold water on my head so I can wake up from being so stupid. And the funniest part of this whole thing is eventually when more concrete reporting came out, we saw that I guess the hospital strike was not nearly as bad as initially reported and the casualties were far lower. And now Hassan has egg on his face, but he's still in denial of the truth and basically obsessed with reporting this misinformation. He came to a conclusion from the beginning. He had in his mind what he wanted to be true and he needed it to be true. And when it wasn't, he refused to truly walk it back. This situation perfectly demonstrated demonstrates the problem with covering breaking news on a stream like that. Now keep in mind, if Hassan every time this happened, like, corrected the record, I wouldn't be nearly as hard on him here. But he doesn't really correct the record, nor does he change his behavior. He just knows what he wants to believe, he knows what his audience wants to hear, and he's willing to deliver that propaganda product as long as there are people watching. And if he were to acknowledge the truth at any point, he's already in too deep. His audience would just eat him alive because they don't want to hear the truth, they want to hear what they already think. Did not have any details on the reported bombing. Fuck you. Fuck you, dude. Why are you, it's ridiculous. Like, oh, Hamas run health ministry. Well, you know how they are. You know how those dirty Arabs are. They lie all the time. You know what I mean? They're probably lying again. 
Meanwhile, well, the Israeli military said that it did not have any details. Okay, got it. Like, who is this imaginary person that exists in his head? Anytime someone calls him out in his reporting, his only response is to discredit their opinion by painting them as racist. He doesn't actually care about the truth at all. What he cares about is his side looking good, him looking good, and being able to demonize anyone who questions him. It honestly seems like a part of some deep-seated insecurity or something because he gets super pressed when questioned at all, and I find it pretty embarrassing to watch. His ego is so inflated, he's so attached to his side being right, that he's in complete denial and actually proven to be wrong. And he has the audacity to say he relies on the facts of the matter to determine the truth. Despite the evidence, he's still 90% leaning towards Israel being guilty. My metric of who is responsible for a bombing is not what I, the IDF says, okay? And it's not even necessarily what Hamas or Hamas-backed people or people on the ground say. What I care about is the, the facts of the matter. Facts of the matter made me lean 90% on the uh, uh, on the Israeli side, assuming that this is an Israeli bombing yesterday, okay? I still maintain the position that it is more likely. It's so painful for him to give this update. However, the reality is that now, after looking at all of the new evidence bomb site that we can lay eyes on, the Israeli counterclaim of this being a Islamic Jihad or potentially a Hamas rocket misfiring is is not as unlikely as it was yesterday. It was just as likely yesterday. What facts? Because all you did here was ignore the facts of the situation and make up your own reality in your head that reflected the narrative that you wanted to push. And this easily leads to the worst trait about Hassan. If you criticize him, he immediately attempts to disarm you by insulting your character and painting you to be unreliable rather than actually addressing what you're saying. Because he knows he cannot address the actual points that people have against him because he is wrong. He will get destroyed in the marketplace of ideas. Are you schizophrenic? Or did your head get cut off because you sure sound brainless when you come in here and shadow box? What the f is wrong with you? I have never said that. He said that resistance to apartheid is always imperfect. What the hell are we doing here? You bad faith apartheid defending bloodthirsty genocidal freak the video by willie mack show is an hour long i highly recommend you watch it if you're interested it's a really methodical dissection of hassan's misdeeds well with this video getting a bunch of views with a follow-up video we did about hassan with the video he did a year ago about hassan's ukraine coverage with streamers like destiny taking notice there was a lot of heat on him at the time and so he finally decided to debate willie on the subject when he challenged him to a conversation funnily enough this debate opens with hassan admitting he'd never even watched the video at all but i guess he still wanted to have a conversation, which of course allowed Willie to easily lead it with the point that Hassan never researches the things he talks about on stream before he talks about them. Now, Hassan tries to justify this by calling it drama farming and saying Willie is just a drama leech. Do you really oh, consider, Palestine. do you really consider me watching a fucking dumbass YouTube video yes. from a drama farming channel to be doing research? I don't need to yes, do research this is what you're on a video. About. You're going into a topic you don't know anything about. And basically, Hassan is acting like he's totally above this kind of content, which is very ironic because Hassan covers drama as well. He covers e-celeb drama, and he also does bottom-of-the-barrel reaction content where he watches TV shows other people have made and adds nothing. Like, to be clear, I don't think drama content is like high art. It's not. It's absolutely not. I mean, I guess it can be if you're like Gokunaru or I guess Idubs back in the day, but in general, like drama stuff is like TMZ bull. But I don't think that should bother you unless you're truly making something truly artistic and amazing, which Hassan does not do. He just makes the same exact slop. Ironically, Hassan calls his video a drama video, but the entire thing is just Willie correcting the misinformation that Hassan has spread. I honestly think it's better to cover drama stuff if you do it right than to cover serious breaking news and do it wrong. Willie covers all of the breaking news stories that Hassan has covered in the past while in this hour-long video better than Hassan has in his entire career. But once again, this drama leech accusation just plays into the villainizing criticism part of Willie's video. Hassan's tendency to try and discredit anyone who he cannot argue with. And he basically just spends the next five minutes insulting Willie while also cutting him off, calling his video bad, he hasn't seen it, acting like it's beneath him to even watch it or have the conversation and getting butt hurt about him being called out over his Ukraine take. And keep in mind, this is not like a planned thing. Willie came on because Hassan called him out randomly to debate him. Willie manages to keep his cool though, even with Hassan being like, You don't remember your other video from a year ago? You didn't even prepare? You know nothing. You're just completely like, you blew Dude, this it's whole your video. video. Oh, it's your video right about me. This should be so simple for you to be like, This is where you lied. Just say right. it. We I already established the, video, the first thing. The first thing you did was wrong. Then. All right. You got to give me a minute. Okay.
This Are you trying research. to link me you your video? I'm not going to watch your video. Just say it with your mouth, with your words. Go ahead. I have to, I have to watch my video to see what my receipt is because this is a year old. <laughs> Right, I didn't know we were. I didn't know, know where you this don't even know your own video. Going. You don't know the contents of your own fucking video. I made it really? a year ago, bro. You think you're, you're you think I you're like doing a good job right now? When, instead of do you think you're doing you a good job right now, defending your position? Like it's yeah, such a I profound do, position. You're doing exactly it's such a profound position do. that you don't even fucking remember your own talking points. And the whole time, this other dude is just in the background, awkwardly looking at the floor, like sweating, while he listens to Hassan yell into his microphone. But finally, they get to the meat of the situation, and it's basically Hassan dodging the questions while Willie tries to smash him over the head. You We're having a conversation about Ukraine and Russia. We're having a conversation about Ukraine and Russia, and I'm asking him. A specific question. You I'm asking you You're a specific conversation. question. My conversation's about you because my videos are about you and your pattern of behavior and your poor reporting. And now <laughs> you're trying to shift it all these other ways because you know you can't face the truth. Russia had this, not. Bro. Russia had not bombed. Uh, Russia had not bombed Kiev at the time. That's number one. Duh. Number two. Of, of course, as soon as that did happen, I covered it. Of course I did. Because Dude, the, that's the, what I'm the, doing. The criticism isn't the that you didn't cover it. The criticism is that you're making baseless you're making baseless claims you don't know anything about, talking so confidently, as if you got a whole fucking research team behind you. When you don't, you're talking out your ass. This is the Brother, do you have a whole research team behind you? Because yeah, you're not me. I actually did research just now, and you could barely be patient <laughs> enough to sit there and listen through it. You because had to go ahead it's a, and go it's a video. You made a video a year time. ago about me talking about like yes. my opinion yes, on, a, on a, Russia and Ukraine. Reporting. You personally do not yes. have an opinion on Russia or Ukraine at all. I, I have taken I mean, accountability my on my. I've taken accountability on the things that I've reported wrong. You should do the research. If I'm I've, not willing to talk I have about taken Trisha accountability Davis, on the things that I have reported why are wrong you reporting on. In wars when you can't do the Willie no script. Shit. Listen to me. I've taken accountability on the things that I have said that are incorrect. Of That's course, on the editorial perspective, on the editorial side of my coverage, okay? On the editorial side of my coverage, if I make a prediction or a speculation, it can sometimes be wrong. That speculation is always going to be on foundational yeah, analysis we, that is solid. I got another one too. Hey, I got just more examples. Do you have an more, issue more with the, do you do you have an issue with my analysis of the situation? Because I can't possibly yes. do research on things that haven't happened yet. I can simply no, speculate. You just make it up. And you this entire Do you think when I say, "Guys, I don't think that Russia will bomb Kyiv" is actually in my, in your opinion, like me making up something, or oh, do you no, think it's you're speculation? No, no, the clip is actually you talking really condescendingly about people who think that could happen. That's the clip. Okay, but you're, yeah, okay, you don't. Yeah, so why is are this you, all why just are tone you policing? That? You is that what, what it is? You're talking about is this all? This, so all of this is is just you personally tone policing the way I'm covering no, the not news. No, it's policing. It's about your. Do you have any reporting. genuine interest or any curiosity in like Russia and Ukraine at all, or, or is all you do fucking drama farming off of clips? Because over the course of this entire conflict, I've dedicated tens or hundreds of hours into my coverage, and the mm -hmm. analysis in and of itself comes from a solid foundation. Now, the predictions might be wrong, and it certainly yeah. was, which is something that I took accountability for, even though you said I had not. So you, here's you my really question didn't. to you. You then did just you did look the same into, mistake again. You did, did the you same look criticism into, again. Did you look into, okay, what sources I was looking at and where I was getting this opinion from? Yeah, because there were sources beyond, of beyond just like to, looking at beyond just like looking at YouTube clips and regurgitating talking points specifically that you've heard from other like neoliberal I mean, commentators and what so and keep in mind when he says neoliberal commentators he's referencing destiny here who Hassan has a deep deep hatred for to the point where his name is like Voldemort you can't even say it in his chat he doesn't say his name on stream and Hassan tries to act like he created the whole twitch politics space which is like combining video games and internet culture with politics I I just made my own choices and uh, built my own business model, I guess, if I were to use a term like that. I paved it on my own because I thought like, this is a concept that I think is cool, gaming. This is a concept that I think you can marry uh, with gaming, political commentary. My church background also gave me a, a very different perspective on America's involvement in world affairs. Uh, most Americans don't recognize this or know this, but like- Outside of America, you know, people kind of look at Americans as like psychos, because we are. We're
psychos. We're bloodthirsty psychos. When in reality, he just ripped off what Destiny was already doing, which is, by the way, what all the Twitch politics people did. I don't even care that they did that, but like, if you're gonna use that format, you can't pretend like you're the first person to do it. You gotta pay homage to Stephen Vanell II, okay? You got it. You gotta, you gotta put respect on his name. Hey, hey, hey. It is actually Mel time, and you will respect that. And now Hassan won't even say his name out loud say, say, no, 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 no. because he's scared of talking to him because he knows it would be the first time a five foot six man has ever gotten a six foot four guy in a rear naked choke until he taps on a Twitch stream. And it's funny that Hassan's only point is Willie could not remember a video he made a year ago about Hassan. For context, Willie Maxwell put out a video about one year ago where they focus on the Ukraine Russia conflicts that Hassan was talking about, and then he did this more recent video about Hassan as a whole with that included as a smaller point. And then Hassan himself, who was like criticizing Willie for not remembering this video, could not remember when he claimed that the CIA faked a missile attack on a US base. What base are you talking about? I don't even know what you're talking about with the Iranian thing. What? Uh, Iran struck a US base. And then you said it's the CIA. No shot. It's the CIA. Wait, I I'm so... I know, you I don't know because you do so much bullshit all the time you can't even yeah, remember what perhaps, it perhaps... Perhaps. Wow, you don't remember something from a year ago. Crazy, because when I did that, I got nailed to the cross for it. When you do it, it's no problem. Cool. What's frustrating is no matter how many examples I bring up of Hassan jumping to conclusions when it comes to breaking news, he always frames himself as coming from a sound place. So for instance, like the missile hit the Gaza hospital, both sides blamed each other. That's mm -hmm. the breaking news, right? And yeah. instead of waiting for more information, you hmm. jumped to conclusion saying it was 100% Israel. 100% okay. were so good, confident. Good You're point. Like all the good point. Good point. When I said that, I didn't just go, oh, I have no other opinion on this matter. I simply think Israel definitely did this because I want Israel to have definitely done this. The reason mm -hmm. why I said this, and you do this regularly, okay? When I say something on this stream, okay, Oftentimes, especially if it's Did a you watch developing the video? story, like, how do you know I say this stuff? Especially if it's a developing story, when I say something on uh, on an issue that is happening, I look to all of the circumstantial evidence on the matter. You're bringing this up, and this is really important to understand. One, all of the is circumstantial it? You say that evidence. Every time, but it never is. Okay, all of the circumstantial evidence at the time, of course after the 6,000 bombs that Israel had dropped on Gaza, a densely populated open-air prison, uh, yes. the 6,001st bomb, understandably, was going to be the, an Israeli bomb. To this day, we still do not know whether this was an Islamic Jihad rocket that was misfired or whether or not this was actually right, an, an artillery shell right. that might have hit a fuel tank yeah. or even, and or even, or even, some other kind of munition that so, Israel so may have deployed. So why did you say it was now, the reason why, Israel and then call everyone genocidal because, freaks that disagree with you? Because you don't actually you watch the content beyond... You demonize them. Because... First of all, because they That's are. Like you, and there it is. Thankfully, they do manage to talk about the missile attack on the Gaza hospital at one point, and Hassan tries to act like he sometimes is wrong, but he always makes sure to give fair covers to every side and do his due diligence given the information he has. And I mean, for that, you just can do like a, like, like you can literally imagine the clip in your mind of like the, oh, oh, oh wait till you see the, oh, oh, oh. And then you just like roll the clip to see how ironic this thing is. If I make a prediction or a speculation, it can sometimes be wrong. That speculation is always going to be on foundational yeah, analysis when, that is solid. Know, no. IDF didn't bomb the hospital? Yes, it did. Yes, it did. Yes, it fucking did. You fucking piece of shit. Yes, it absolutely did. Fuck you. Fuck you. You genocidal scumbag. You have no fucking dignity. You do not have an ounce of dignity inside of your soul. But it doesn't matter. Terrible that the people died, but I encourage you to look into where Hamas was firing. You fucking piece of shit. You garbage, monstrous scumbag. You garbage, monstrous scumbag. You said IDF didn't bomb the hospital, and then you said it did. Still a piece of shit genocide uh, denier, 100%. But no, it is not a fucking misfire. And during the entire stream, Hassan is making these asides where he tries to tie Willie to some political movement to discredit him to his audience. For example, he randomly invokes Gamergate and compares Willie to the members of Gamergate, whatever that means, who like dox female journalists. You care about the truth and honesty in journalism, like you're a fucking Gamergate holdout being like, oh, I care about the ethics in video game Wait, journalism. I... That's why we have to dox these fucking female journalists or some shit. I didn't dox anybody, bro. What are you talking I about? I didn't say that. I'm using, do you know what a analogy is dumb 
I honestly don't know what Gamergate is. Where did this even come from? The dude's mind is truly an enigma. Scrambled eggs inside there, just sloshing around in his mind with buzzwords. And this is the problem. All this dude has is just these weird insults. And then he calls it an analogy, as if that analogy is not totally off base, unrelated, and dumb. Overall, this debate really just went on to validate all the points Willie made in his video initially, from Hassan avoiding any accountability, deflecting any argument he can into some unrelated issue, using insults to discredit his opponent so he doesn't have to address the actual substance and meat of the situation. It was embarrassing for him if it was if there's like a if there's a deployment like an activation that uh that israeli munitions have that can uh that can detonate way before it impacts the ground. It seems to me like people may finally be waking up to how dumb Hassan Piker truly is. Unfortunately, once his stream dies, we'll probably see a conservative dude on the other side be just as crazy as he is. It will be the sort of uno reverse of the situation, but that's always how it works, really. You know, you kind of get these crazies on both extreme ends of the political spectrum. Regardless, it's been good to see Hassan get called out on this behavior. Hopefully, it keeps happening in the future. I would guess if someone were to watch through Hassan's past six years of streaming, you'd probably find one of these instances a week where Hassan engages in ridiculous stuff. And that's just the way they could cookie crumbles in Hassan world, you know, for all of these sort of super far left political streamers, facts don't really matter. What matters is propaganda, and they're all following the lead of the biggest guy in the business. And make no mistake, it is a very, very profitable business. But who knows, who knows, maybe this whole thing will actually teach him a lesson and it'll change his behavior, even if not for like, uh, you know, virtuous reasons, maybe he just will get sick of being called out. Uh, no, actually, he, he won't. Sorry, sorry to disappoint. Anyway, thanks for watching my video. Hope you all enjoyed. Check out Willie's work in the description below. He made some great videos about this, and uh, yeah, I'll see you all tomorrow. Bye. And be sure to become a member. For $5 a month, they get the members only podcasts and exclusive videos that only members get. Thanks so much for your support. No